Hello again, this is the Earl Grey Reader coming to you from his home in the Pacific Northwest, where it is nice and dreary today. This is podcast number three. This podcast will be a bit shorter as I begin to feature some of my favorite poems. And today's poem is by Robert Frost, one of my favorite poets. It is taken from his book, Mountain Interval, originally published in 1916, so it's in the public domain. The poem is entitled, Birches. When I see birches bend to left and right, across the lines of straighter, darker trees, I like to think some boy's been swinging them. But swinging doesn't bend them down to stay. Ice storms do that. Often you must have seen them, loaded with ice a sunny winter morning after a rain. They click upon themselves as the breeze rises, and turn many colored as the stir cracks and crazes their enamel. Soon the sun's warmth makes them shed crystal shells, shattering and avalanching on the snow crust. Such heaps of broken glass to sweep away, you'd think the inner dome of heaven had fallen. They are dragged to the withered bracken by the load, and they seem not to break, though once they are bowed so low for long, They never right themselves. You may see their trunks arching in the woods, years afterwards, trailing their leaves on the ground, like girls on hands and knees that throw their hair before them over their heads to dry in the sun. But I was going to say, when Truth broke in with all her matter of fact about the ice storm, now am I free to be poetical? I should prefer to have some boy bend them, as he went out and in to fetch the cows. Some boy too far from town to learn baseball, whose only play was what he found himself, summer or winter, and could play alone. One by one he subdued his father's trees by riding them down over and over again until he took the stiffness out of them, and not one but hung limp. Not one was left for him to conquer. He learned all there was to learn about not launching out too soon, and so not carrying the tree away clear to the ground. He always kept his poise to the top branches, climbing carefully with the same pains you used to fill a cup, up to the brim and even above the brim. Then he flung outward, feet first with a swish, kicking his way down through the air to the ground. So was I once myself a swinger of birches, and so I dream of going back to be. It's when I'm weary of considerations, and life is too much like a pathless wood, where your face burns and tickles with the cobwebs broken across it, and one eye is weeping from a twig's having lashed across it open. I'd like to get away from earth a while and then come back to it and begin over. May no fate willfully misunderstand me, and half grant what I wish, and snatch me away, not to return. Earth's the right place for love. I don't know where it's likely to go better. I'd like to go by climbing a birch tree, and climb black branches up a snow-white trunk toward heaven, till the tree could bear no more but dipped its top and set me down again. That would be good both going and coming back. One could do worse than be a swinger of birches. That was Birches by Robert Frost. While there are many analyses of this and other poems, and I usually read some of them before I read a poem, to try and help ascertain what are the possible feelings my reading should evoke. I rarely wish to discuss such analysis. In the words of a former U.S. Poet Laureate, Billy Collins, I never want to tie the poem to a chair with rope and torture a confession out of it, or beat it with a hose to find out what it really means. What I will do is tell my listener what I like about the poem, or how it makes me feel. I've started my poetry series with Robert Frost because his subject matter is close to my heart. 
Most of Frost's poetry is written in and around the life that is rural New England. I am the son and grandson of Massachusetts mill workers and subsistence farmers. And though my parents moved away when I was a child, the memory of playing in the woods of New England, paper birches and sugar maples, old stone walls, rushing mountain streams, and so on, it's all stuck in my heart. I'm well aware of the comparisons between life's questions, truths, exertions, and ecstasies, as they are metaphorically referred to by swinging in birches. But even on its surface, this is a beautiful poem of nature and youth and place that makes my heart sing. I hope you enjoyed this podcast. I am the Earl Grey Reader, and I hope you have a wonderful day wherever you are.